Yes, start your presentation. My presentation is about weaving looms. A loom is a device that causes interlacement two sets of threads, namely, warp and weft threads, to form a fabric. The very first loom in history is the pit loom. Subsequently the hand loom was developed and then the power loom. After the advent of power looms, a number of developments have taken place. Looms have different types. Hand looms and power looms. Power looms are further divided into shuttle and shuttle less looms. Shuttle less looms are further divided to projectile looms, rapier looms, air jet looms, and water jet looms. Now I will tell you about basic mechanism of looms. The basic mechanisms in any type of loom can be classified as primary motions, secondary motions and auxiliary motions. Please elaborate these motions. The primary motions can further be divided as shutting, picking and beat up motions. The shutting opens the warp sheet into layers to facilitate passage of shuttle. The picking motion causes the shuttle carrying whiffs to be propelled from one end of loom to another. The beat-up motion lays the previously laid whiffs to the fell of the cloth. The secondary motions comprise of take-up and let-off motions. The take-up motion helps to wind the cloth onto the cloth roller and also influences the pick density in the cloth. The let-off motion helps to let the warp from the weaver's beam at an uniform rate thus maintaining the warp tension constant throughout the weaving process. The auxiliary motions consist of the warp stop motion, with stop motion and warp protector motion. The warp stop motion is used to stop the loom in the event of warp breakages. This is necessary to prevent fabric defects such as missing ends and floats. The whiffed stop motion is used to stop the loom in the event of whiffed exhaustion or whiffed breakages. This is necessary to prevent missing whiffed threads called cracks, in the fabric. The warp protector is used to prevent multiple warp thread breakages in the event of shuttle getting trapped in the middle of the warp sheet. Now moving on to important parts of loom. First one is heel shaft. It is related to the shutting mechanism. The heel shaft is made of wood or metal such as aluminium. It carries a number of heeled wires through which the ends of the warp sheet pass. The heeled shafts are also known as heeled frames or heeled staves. The number of heeled shafts depends on the warp repeat of the weave. Second one is shuttle. It is basically a whiff carrier and helps in interlacement of the whiffs with the warp threads to form cloth. The shuttle which is made of wood passes from one end of the loom to the other. It travels along the wooden sleeve race and passes between the top and bottom layers of the warp sheet. The shuttle enters a shuttle box fitted at either ends of the loom, after passing through the warp shed. A shuttle normally weighs about 0.45 kilograms. Third one is reed. It is a metallic comb that is fixed to the sleeve with a reed cap. The reed is made of a number of wires and the gap between wires is known as dents. Each dent can accommodate one, two or more warp ends. The count of the reed is decided by the number of dents in two inches. Next one is warp beam. This is also known as the weaver's beam. It is fixed at the back of the loom. The warp sheet is wound onto this beam. The length of warp in the beam may be more than a thousand meters. Next is back rest. It is placed above the weaver's beam. It may be of the fixed or floating type. In the first case the backrest merely acts as a guide to the warp sheet coming from THU Weaver's beam. In the second case it acts both as a guide and as a sensor for sensing the warp tension. And finally the cloth beam. It is also known as the cloth roller. The woven cloth is wound onto this roller. This roller is placed below the front rest. That's all from my presentation. Thank you for watching.